is happiness even possible? Well, the answer kind of depends on what you think happiness is. So the first thing is to start there. What truly makes you feel happy? What does happiness feel like to you? How do you know you're happy? What happens in your mind and your body? Yeah, what does it feel like? What pictures do you see? What do you hear? What do you say to yourself? What sensations do you experience that make you go, gosh, I feel really happy right now? Knowing the answers to those questions can help you to tap into the experience when it arises. One of the biggest mistakes most of us make with regards to chasing happiness or expecting happiness is that we think it's some kind of nirvana that we arrive at and that once we get there we will be happy but the thing is that happiness is the ability to extract good feeling from a moment in your life sometimes we might describe it as being joyful sometimes it's gratitude sometimes it's just really loving something you're doing and being so immersed in it and so interested in it that you just light up. Those are all part of the spectrum of what it feels like, certainly to me, to live a happy life. So one of the big traps to avoid is to think of happiness as some kind of all-encompassing state because emotions naturally ebb and flow and they're meant to. That's the nature of them. Otherwise, they wouldn't be productive because you need your emotions in order to know that something isn't right, that you need to move away from something rather than towards it. If you felt happy all the time, you move towards things all the time, and that's not what you need. So first of all, being clear about the ability to just recognize and be in the moment is a key part of experiencing happiness. I certainly found this in my life. Most of us make the mistake of thinking that once we feel happy, that we're going to stay happy. Um, and it was a big part of my kind of early depression when I'd be like, oh God, this horrible feeling and I can't get rid of it. What's wrong with me? Why do I always feel this way? Why does this always happen? I'd kind of catastrophize it and make it bigger. One of the things happier people tend to do is they tend to recognize these states and accept them as being part of the natural seasons that we go through. Happier people tend to be able to manage uncomfortable emotions with greater ease. So they don't panic when they go through them. This is one of the things that I have had to learn on my journey is to not be so freaked out when negative emotions or uncomfortable emotions arise and rather to just go okay well, what what is this where is it coming from what is it trying to tell me and allowing it to be there and paying attention to it and when we do a it passes more easily and then b we begin to recognize that these emotions will in fact pass so what I have found, I often think about happiness a bit like a door in the mind. So it's easy to access it, go in and out whenever you want and experience happiness whenever you want. But the way we live very often piles stuff in front of the door. And one of those things is panicking about negative emotions. It's like putting a box in front of the door. So over time, the way we live piles stuff up in front of the door and it makes it harder to experience those kind of easy happy, joyful, free moments that are peppered throughout every single day. And in my life, I found those one of the big things that really stressed me out in my life were, was uh, dealing with my toddler and the fact that he just would not do what I asked or wanted him to do. Um, we had the added complication that uh, I had my children through adoption. Um, and so my son was 17 months old when I met him and it was highly, highly traumatized. So for a long time, he actually wouldn't come near me at all. And that was very difficult. So all the love that I had to give and all the kind of beautiful parenting images that I had in my mind of all this, you know, happy, beautiful life that we were going to have wasn't available at that time because my child was utterly bereft, traumatized, achingly miserable and pre-verbal so there was no way to comfort him with words but he wouldn't allow me to touch him so I couldn't comfort him with hugs and cuddles either so it was an enormously difficult time but there would be moments tiny 
two second, three second moments where he would sit on my lap. Even if he was crying, he would sit on my lap and cuddle into me or something. And I had to learn to feel that, to be in that moment and go, this is what it's about. There'll be more of these. The rest will pass. Just be here in this moment now. And kind of learn to accept that no matter how hard things are, being able to catch those tiny moments allows them to expand because you become more able to notice them. You don't miss them quite so easily. And that builds up to experience what overall becomes a life you feel happy living. And that's been my experience. The final trap that I want to share with you is one where most of us confuse pleasure with happiness. And so what we often have is, you know, you go on holiday or you'll have a beautiful glass of wine or you'll buy something lovely from the shop and you get that buzz of like, oh, it's so nice. <gasps> Isn't this beautiful? Oh, I could live like this all the time. It's so wonderful. Or uh, I have this piece of chocolate cake. It's so delicious. I'd love another piece. And so on and so on. And we have kind of gravitated towards this more is better culture. But the truth is, when it comes to pleasure, more robs us of the pleasure. And you'll know this if you have gone back for the second piece of cake or you finished the bottle of wine and then gone on to have another bottle of wine, that those later glasses don't taste the same. They don't bring the same amount of pleasure. That extra piece of chocolate cake sends you away from pleasure and into that stomach ache and that regret and that feeling of why did I do that? But we seek it because, well, Chemically, we're being buzzed by a, a chemical called dopamine, and that is driving us to do more of the same because our brain is learning, oh, that feels nice. Do it again. That's nice. Yes, yes. Um, but that doesn't lead to happiness. And so for me, again, I have found happiness, if I think about it as that door, piling up more and more and more and more pleasurable experiences in front of the door actually crowds the door to happiness, where having fewer pleasurable experiences and really relishing them, having that one piece of chocolate cake, but savoring it and loving every bite is better than eating it while scrolling your phone, missing it, and then being like, oh, that, that was nice, do it again. Um, because you haven't really registered the pleasure from the first one. So happier people tend to be able to carry all of that into a single thread, which is, being present in the moment, experiencing that moment and recognizing it for all the value that it offers. When it's positive and pleasurable, to really drink in that pleasure. When it's negative and uncomfortable, to recognize that in that moment, you can do it. It is going to be okay. This will pass. And just allow it to be. And often, the experience of happiness is predicated on our ability to manage our way through those difficult emotions. Certainly in my case, one of the biggest things I did to cost myself my happiness for years was I just kept overthinking those moments, over hosting those emotions. So I'd wake up in the morning and I'd be like, how do I feel? Am I okay? Do I feel stressed today? How much energy do I have? I don't think I have enough energy. Oh God, is it going to be a bad day? Like I would go through all of that stuff because I was checking, checking, checking. Am I okay? To let some of that go, all of that stuff just adds boxes in front of that door. And eventually, if you keep habitually running the same processes, those boxes pile up so much you can't see the door anymore. So to answer the question, is it really possible to be happy? It is if you remove some of the things that are blocking your ease of experiencing the happy moments in your life. I hope that helps. And if you found this video useful, click the like button, hit the subscribe button and follow me for more.